Statistics New Zealand have recently updated their household net worth data and also their individual net worth data. And I know that you're a human and you probably like to compare yourself to other people. So I'm going to help you do that by digging into this spreadsheet that Statistics New Zealand have put together so you can compare yourself before the AI agents come and become even more wealthy than you and you don't compare yourself to them because they're not human. Anyway, let's get into some of this data to see how bloody exciting it is. So I'm going to start with the individual uh, net worth data so that you can directly compare yourself to other people and we'll do this via the age bracket data that they give us and then we'll go into some of the other things that this survey now tells us. So individual net worth typically increase with age until the retirement. Young people, that's 15 to 24 year olds, had the lowest median individual net worth of $4,000. Well, of course, because they're younger, so they probably have had less time to acquire and stack wealth and build it up. Now, what is net worth, you ask? Well, it's assets minus liabilities. That equals your net worth, and I suggest you track that every month. It's what the bank are going to want to have a look at when you go to borrow money. Now, people aged 75 years and over had the highest median individual net worth of $590,000. So from the high level information, I thought, well, what about the different age groups? So I went to find uh, this information, and it is in this giant spreadsheet here. Now, of course, Harry Hardout's already going to be in the comments. Oh, don't worry about the mean or the median. What about the mean? What about the mode? Hey, you can get on the stats.com gov.nz website and you can ask for that information because this dickhead over here doesn't know every single thing about this data that's been compiled over a number of years and hours and hours but if you're so keen to find it I'm sure they'll give you those answers so good luck and let us know how you get on anyway for the rest of you who are a little bit more sane and not so uh, you know into the absolute weeds of it let's just get some high level stuff so individual net worth 15 to 24 four thousand dollars from 25 to 34, it is $47,000. 35 to 44, $132,000. From 45 to 54, it is $314,000. Let me just move down this massive spreadsheet. From 55 to 64, it is $488,000. From 65 to 74, it is $538,000. And 75 plus, it is $590,000. Quite a big jump up, isn't it, from the 45 to 54s at $314,000 through to 55 to 64 at $488,000. Now, I know some of you will be saying, what about the mean? What about the mean? I think, which I think is an average, but some statistics freak who doesn't have uh, any statistics experience will be letting me know in the comments right now that I've got that wrong or there could be another way to think about it but anyway geez we're all out here learning so I went to the mean value just for those who would be interested in that as well because these figures are going to be a little bit different now a median is normally the middle value uh, whilst someone in the YouTube uh, comments will be very quickly letting you know what the mean is or you can quickly google that to find out yourself anyway the total individual net worth and the mean value from 15 to 24 is $18,000. From 25 to 34, it is $136,000. From 35 to 44, it is $321,000. And from 45 to, 60, uh, 45 to 54, it is $647,000. Now, from 55 to 64, it is $866,000. And from 65 to 74, it is $954,000. 75 plus, it is 864000 They do total these up as well if you're interested in those. But again, you can go and get this information off of the stats website should you be uh, so interested. But let's get back to uh, some of the key findings that they released as part of this. The net median net worth of New Zealand households, so we were talking about individuals, uh, was was $529,000, up 33% from $399,000 in the year ended June 2021. The increase in net worth was largely driven by an increase in the value of owner-occupied dwellings, other real estate property held on family trusts and consumer durables. We'll talk about that in a second. Now this one, I'm sure some of the political parties will be particularly interested in this one. Household net worth continued to be concentrated in the top 20% of households 
which held about 66% of total household net worth. Now, owner-occupied dwellings and other real estate, not including those owned through trusts or businesses, accounted for 48% of total household assets, up from 43% in 2021. So we look to be concentrating our wealth further in property. What a surprise. New Zealanders have always loved property. Now, there is a news article as part of this as well. And if you want to find it, you can just simply Google that title there that you'll see. So search Stats NZ. Household net worth increases, wealth distribution remains unchanged. Interesting. So if I skim through some of this information for you, some of it we would have just covered off. And the year ended June 2024. The median net worth of New Zealand households was 529,000. This was 33% higher than in the year ended June 2021 when the median household net worth was $399,000. Net worth is the value of households' assets such as real estate, retirement savings and shares, less its debt such as mortgages, credit card debt and student loans. Half of New Zealand households have more than the median household net worth and half have less. So that's what a median is. The increase in median net worth was largely driven by an increase in the value of real estate as we talked about before. Uh, but let's get into some of the things that I thought was quite interesting down here. Between the year ended June 2021 and 2024, New Zealand's wealthiest 20% of households saw their median net worth increase by 19%, reaching 2.4 million. Over this period, the median net worth of households in quintiles 3 and 4 increased by approximately 31%, reaching 0.5 million and 1%, uh, 1 million respectively. There was no statistically significant change in the lower two quintiles. The wealthiest 20% of households held the largest share of their wealth in financial assets, this is what's very fascinating. The wealthiest 20% of households held the largest share of their wealth in financial assets such as pension funds, shares and investment funds. The remainder of households held the largest share of their wealth in non-financial assets such as real estate and durable goods. Now when I was a young fella growing up and reading things like this, I would be like, hmm, one day I wouldn't mind being wealthy. I wouldn't mind having some more money. What does this data tell me? Well, this data tells me that the wealthiest 20% of households held their largest share of their wealth in financial assets, such as pension funds, shares, and investment funds. I need to learn about pension funds, shares, and investment funds. 80-20 rule, you know, okay, if I want to be in that 20%, I've got to learn a little bit more than maybe just the property stuff that everybody else uh, seems to be doing. But that's not how other people would interpret that. That is that uh, someone said to me, no, it's because people are wealthy, so therefore they have paid off their house and then they can invest more into shares and things like that. But I thought, well, maybe I'll never be super uh, minted, but I would like to learn the habits and the ways of the wealthier households earlier to give myself a chance of getting there or maybe even investing for my children and things like that and thinking about what those wealthy people might be doing and thinking about it sooner so that I can try and close the gap a little bit and act like them nice and early. So maybe there's a lesson in there for us. Now, what else have we got here? Uh, in the year ended June 2024, the wealthiest 20% of households held approximately two-thirds of New Zealand's total household net worth. Household financial statistics spokesman, spokesperson Chris Pooch said, this reflects an uneven distribution of wealth in this country. Sure to be a big talking point over the next 12 months, uh, I would imagine. There's been little change in the distribution of wealth in New Zealand since we began collecting net worth data on the Household Economic Survey in June 2015. In the year ended June 2024, the wealthiest 10% of households held 49% of New Zealand's total household net worth compared with 53% and the year ended June 2015. Interestingly, so they've got less now. They The wealthiest 10% held 49%, whereas that was compared with 53% in the year ended. So maybe through me investing in some of these shares, I've taken a little bit off of them. Or I don't know if I'd be in the top 10%, I'd have to dig into the data. Probably not, I think I've got a long way to go. Uh, they did do some data analysis as to households receiving gifts and inheritance as well, which you might find interesting. But anyway, this is a data set that I think gets updated every year, uh, but has more in-depth data every three years, I believe. So expect to see uh, a little bit more about this, but there is a massive, massive, massive um, stack of data that comes out as part of this, and someone way cleverer than I will probably be able to help um, you work through it should you want to, uh, but also in here you can see there's a contents of all of the different data from household assets and liabilities, um, 
inequality measures, household net worth by household characteristics, individual net worth by highest qualification, individual assets and liabilities, median, mean, total. Um, there's just It just goes on and on. There's, there's tables and tables. But what I do, and it was published on the 26th of September 2025. Now, what I do believe you can do with Statistics New Zealand is you can actually ask them uh, if they'll go and research some of this data for you and help you make sense of some of it with a live chat function on their website, which if you really do want to dive into it, you may find interesting. But maybe I'll, I'll leave a couple of uh, links below for you to find these articles if you're really, really interested in it. But uh, let, let us know what you think of the data and what your thoughts uh, are in general of whether you thought the figures would be higher uh, or lower, both at the household and individual level.